guys. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about homework too. Since last week we just had only one class, I didn't get a chance to talk about it in the class. And I thought, you know, this video can help you at least navigate through uh, uh, some portions of homework too. All right. So let's uh, let's get started and just take a look at what are the problems that uh, you know that you gotta solve in homework too. All right. So well. So the first question again. Um, it's I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you have already started working on it. Um, so the idea behind this homework is that for you to look at the pressure distribution behind or around an airfoil and how it changes for different airfoils. Because if you remember in class, we've been talking about uh, how is lift generated on an airfoil and what are the different ways by which we can predict lift on an airfoil, you know, predict, measure, or estimate lift around an airfoil. Um, one of the ways that we talked about in class last time is that you can use a direct force sensor to actually measure it, right? Measure lift or normal or axial force directly. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, again, as we talked about, if you want to measure drag, you need a really, really expensive sensor. Um, and there is another way to estimate drag, which is using dynamic pressure. So dynamic pressure is basically half rho v square. Now, if you have a model um, and uh, if, if you uh, get a given velocity, you can basically predict what, what lift will be using half rho v square times s times z l, right? But there's also another way by which you can predict lift, and that has to deal with static pressure. So basically looking at what is the high pressure on bottom and low pressure on top, and if we can find that, then we can basically subtract it, right? So in order to understand that, we have to look at what is static pressure first and how static pressure around an airfoil changes. A better way to actually look at that is by using this, what is called X-foil. Um, you can use X-foil or we can also use what is called XFLR5. So, you know, I put XFOIL because, you know, I guess it's easy to download. XFLR5 is basically like XFOIL on steroids. Um, uh, forgive my penmanship on screen, you know, it's terrible, but, you know, you get the idea. It's XFLR5, okay? So XFOIL is it's a command prompt type software where you have to, like, type commands. Whereas XFLR5 is like a GUI, so it has like a graphic user interface, which allows you to like navigate through the software pretty easily. So again, you can use both; um, it doesn't matter. So uh, in this in this uh, in this video, I'll just walk you through the XFLR5 analysis. All right, so let's look at the question itself. Um, so the CGS Hawk is a type of airplane that I came across in a in a in a like an airplane festival in Dayton. Um, so it's a very lightweight airplane, it's experimental airplane. You know, the entire airplane weighs like 600 pounds or so. You can actually see them in here. Like, you know, gross weight is like 625. And it is so lightweight that you can even like float in air if you have like a 15 uh, miles per hour, 15 knots headwind. Um, so it's, a, it's a, again, the entire airplane costs like $2,500. The pilot almost convinced me to buy it, but uh, no, I'm not gonna fall for that. So. The idea is that if you look at the airfoil that is at this, the, the wing is made of, it's made of NACA 2412. Um, and, you know, I think it's made of 2412. So, and a flat bottom, you know, yeah. So, it's a NACA 2412, and the idea is that, um, oh, no, hold on. So, it uses a semi-symmetrical airfoil compared to flat bottom. Yeah, yes, that's right. So it's a, it's an ACA 2412 um, airfoil when compared to a Clark, uh, flat bottom Clark Y. So Clark Y airfoil, most, most like, you know, uh, airplane enthusiast likes to use Clark Y because it's easy to manufacture um, because it has a flat bottom, right? So it's easy to manufacture, uh, whereas this airplane uses an ACA 2412. Um, so the idea is that, you know, what kind of performance wise and what kind of uh, um, you know, aerodynamic benefit that you gain by using a semi-symmetrical 2412 airfoil when compared to a Clark Y airfoil. I hope at least some of you, or, you know, most of you are familiar with the airfoil nomenclature uh, 2412, at least for NACA series. Um, if not, you know, you can just look it up. It doesn't, shouldn't take that much time and it's very easy to understand. Right. So, uh, what, you, what you'll be doing is, you know, you'll be calculating the cruise number for that airplane 
and from there just pick an airfoil you know if you're cruising at an airfoil it at a certain you know altitude you don't cruise at really high angle of attack you cruise at small angle of attack right so pick an angle of attack you know say two degrees or four degrees four degrees even is on the higher side but you know if you even pick zero two or four anytime anything in between should be okay all right so pick an angle of attack and pick a, and, and calculate the Reynolds number and then you're going to feed this data in the XFLR5 or XFOIL and you calculate or determine the coefficient of pressure distribution. Now we haven't quite talked about what coefficient of pressure really is and I hope we can get to that on Monday. Or, so but before that you know I'll just show you in this video how you can obtain this and then we'll talk about what it says in the next class. All right so uh, let's get let's get straight into it, right? So we'll, I'll just uh, I'll just talk about how you can actually get or open XFLR5 or XFOIL, right? So again, for in this video, we'll just look at XFLR5 alone. So except downloading XFLR5 is pretty easy. Just go to Google um, and type XFLR5, right? So you will see this video link called XFLR5 download. Just go over there and. Doesn't matter if you have a Mac or Windows, you should be able to download the recent version of XFLR5, right? Again, I have a Mac at home, and I have a, I have, I have Windows computer in my office, so you know it works on both. So I've tried that both, and it, it should work, right? So click download, and then you know it kind of takes you through. It's a free software; you don't have to pay anything. If it asks you to pay, then you are on the right, or you're on the wrong link, right? So. See here, you know, kind of automatic detect this. It's, it's, you know, I'm running on Mac, so it's basically asking me to download this, right? So similarly, I've already downloaded and installed it, so you know, I should not, uh, I don't have to install again. But for you, for the first time, go ahead and install it. It's pretty easy to install it, um, and then once you install it, just open the software. Right? So let's open this analysis. So let me, let me, let me. Uh, close out and open it again so that you kind of have an idea how it's like when you actually open. Uh, da -da -da -da. Go to my file. So there it is. All right. So I have version six. I, I don't know what the current version is, but you know it should it should work. So this is the window that you'd see. You know, it's basically a blank screen, um, right? So once you have the screen, then you have to you know let's start with the Nacro two four one two. Right, so go to file, right, and then you can basically you can choose, uh, you know, just X file direct design, right. So you have this window pop up, right. So now go to design, and if you go to design, you see this knack of foils. Just click those. So remember the airfoil that we want to investigate is two four one two, right. So all you have to do is just two four one two. And the number of panels defaults to like 100, just change it to 200. You know, the more number of panels you have, the more accurate your results will be. So just click OK. OK, and there it is. So I don't know if you can see clearly, but you can actually see the airfoil shape, right? So this is basically the NACO 2412. And what we really want is for us to, you know, like determine what's the pressure distribution around it. Now, we're going to talk in length about how the airfoil, how the XFLR5 calculates this thing. Um, and by the end of the semester, you'll be able to do it yourself in MATLAB without, you know, basically requiring uh, XFLR5. But for now, we're going to rely on this software to get, to get started. Okay. So now, when you roll the airfoil, and now what we have to do is go define an analysis. Go to analysis and do define an analysis. So define analysis, you get a lot of different types here. Um, you can set it alpha, you can set the Reynolds number. Um, again, there are multiple options. I always like to use uh, type one, so just press type one. And here is where you input the cruise Reynolds number of the, of the airplane, right? So I'm just gonna put one million for now. Uh, but again, it's gonna be whatever that you calculate, right? So cl click okay. And then you will see this this direct foil analysis tab kind of activate. So uh, go ahead, click sequence, and uh, this is basically the angle of attack range you want to investigate at. Again, okay, you can just pick one angle of attack, or you can basically do this multiple angle of attack. You know, it's up to you, right? And when you first run it, just make sure to click viscous store up and all of these. Just initialize all of these, right? Once you've done all that, just click analyze. 
So it'll, your tab will open, you can see that the values are basically getting converged, right? So that's it, you know, you basically ran the analysis. Um, now, in this plot, so there are two options here. So if you click this option, you will actually see the CL versus alpha graph. This is the coefficient of lift versus alpha. But we know we haven't talked quite about what that coefficient represents, and that's what we're going to talk about on Monday. But for this homework, what we really want is this. So it may not, you know, it may, there is a graph here, but you can't see this because the the color is not, you know, good. So you can change the color. Um, hopefully now we can actually see what is called the coefficient of pressure versus cord length, right? So this is basically the way the pressure changes on top of the airfoil, right? Now, what happened, you know, this is at minus four degrees. Now, you basically can change at different angles of attack. Uh, unfortunately, I have to change the color every time, um, but it allows you to see it very clearly, right? Now, let me explain what you actually see in this graph. Um, so, what, you know, the way the pressure changes, as you know, the flow speeds up, right, around the curvature. When the flow goes, velocity goes up, the pressure goes down, correct? When the pressure goes down, again, the static pressure basically lowers, um, and then you have high pressure on the bottom, low pressure on top, and then it goes up, right? So, coefficient of pressure is sort of like a non-dimensional non coefficient. Um, so, we'll talk about what that is uh, in the class tomorrow, but I just want you to show this so that you can actually know, you know how to get the CP data, right? So the really neat, neat way to visualize this, if you go to this tab again and just click show pressure, right? So you can see this arrows pop up. So this arrows kind of indicate what is, how is the pressure changing as a function of angle of attack. Now I'm going to animate. So what this is going to do, it's going to change the angle of attack and show how the pressure changes as a function of that angle of attack. It's pretty cool, right? Now, as you notice, as you increase the angle of attack, you're getting more low pressure towards the end of the leading edge of the airfoil, right? That basically says that you have really high velocity and low pressure, which allows you to basically generate more lift, right? So this is basically for a NACO 2412 airfoil. Now, how do you do this for a Clark Y? Well, unfortunately, there's no inbuilt command in XFLR5 to do Clark Y to input clockwise um, you know, dimensions, but you know you can find the coordinates online. So let me show you how you can do that, right? Isn't that pretty cool, right? I mean, you can see the variation, the color, and the, the pressures and all that, super cool. All right, so let me show you how you can obtain clockwise um, analysis, or clockwise um, airfoil data. So just go to Google and type clockwise, oh, I already have it. Lark Y airfoil coordinates, right? So I'm going to click the first link. This is basically the airfoil tools website. And then basically click this select format data file and you will have this. You, you know, this kind of coordinates will pop up. Right click, save page. Um, you can save as, you know, Clark uh, it, it should You should be able to open this in text, but you don't have to open it, right? So now it's actually saved. Um, go to XFLR5, go to file. Click open, right? Uh, so I might have to go. All right. So uh, the chain twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, homework two clockwise. So this is the this is the airfoil that I just downloaded the clockwise. So if you see that you know here you just have like a flat bottom right there, right? So now we go through the same process. We have the airfoil. Let's go to analysis, define analysis, keep the keep the same Reynolds number that you test that you you know simulated flow over uh, for NACA 00, NACA 2412. Right click OK. Define analysis, everything looks good. So I'll click analyze. Right now I have simulated flow over a Clark Y airfoil, and then you know if I animate the same, look at that. Right, I still get these pressure radiations across this airfoil. Now, what you'll be doing is that you know you'll be looking at what is the, how is the pressure variations changing for a given angle of attack between a NACA two four one two and 
a clockwise airfoil, right? Because the idea is that for us to understand how does the airfoil shape really influencing the pressure variation? Is it a lot or is it like, you know, minimal, right? Doesn't matter what airfoil, what type of airfoil we choose, right? That's sort of the question that we're trying to answer, okay? So, um, again, you have these nice curves. Again, we'll talk about what CP really is and what it actually measures, but there's a way you can export the CP graph. So just, you know, whatever the angle of attack that you choose to use, right, right click it. Um, so I think, yeah, so go to current OP point and then click export. So when you click export, so I'm just gonna write, you know, uh, CXCP, oh, no, I'm just gonna coefficient of pressure of P for clock Y, right? So now if I go back, uh, oh, I gotta navigate again. Just a second. All right. So now when I open that, so I basically, and X is basically my X foil coordinates. CPI is the inviscid um, coefficient of pressure and CPV is the viscous coefficient of pressure. And we'll talk about what QI, QI is basically the dynamic pressure, um, but all we really want is basically the first the first column and the third column, right? So you can input this into EXO and actually plot it. So when you plot the, the CP, the CP viscous, um, make sure to have both the CP from X from NACA 2412 and clock Y on the same uh, graph. Okay, so that you can really compare, you know, how one wants the CP from NACA 2412 and CP from clock Y. Um, you know, uh, matches or compares with each other, okay? So uh, the second question basically involves like for you to calculate lift based on static pressure, but basically, you know, how we can go about calculating lift from this pressure, right? That involves a simple numerical integration. Uh, again, we'll talk about that on Monday, but you know, I want you guys to get started on this, um, right? So and then for the second question, if you actually look at it, so for it, it basically asks you to run the XFOIL or XFLR5 analysis uh, to determine the CP distribution upper and lower surface of NACA 0012 at 0, 4, 10 angles of attack. Um, again, compare the different CP graphs for all three cases in one trend, or one graph, right? So, um, and then, you know, we'll talk about how CP relates to velocity, but basically, it's you going to the same thing. So if you want to do 240012, again, go to design, NACA airfoil, so 2412, write 0012, 200, click OK, there it is, right? We have a symmetric 0012 airfoil. Go ahead, define the analysis in a similar way, make sure you have the right Reynolds number, run it. So again, it's as easy as that. Um, Again, you can animate it. You can see how the pressure changes as a function of different angles of attack. And then you can compare CP distributions from one air file to the other as well. That's why, again, it's a very, very nice tool to know how to use. And it doesn't take that long to learn as well, okay? So I hope this video kind of helps you get started on homework too. Um, and, you know, kind of clear some of the doubts that you may have. But we still have to talk about what CP is and how we can relate that to CL, right? We'll, we'll do that first thing on Monday, okay? All right, I'll see you guys in the next class. Have fun.